Well, hello and a very good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's lovely to see you here this morning. Uh, it's a bit uh, disappointing with the, the clouds out there. I'm getting quite used to uh, blue skies and sun, but uh, I think those days are over just now. But, uh, but they do tell us they'll come back, so hopefully they will. Uh, just a couple of things on your order of service, just on the back page there. You'll notice the uh, Leaving Church on the web. Uh, you'll see the uh, link for the Facebook page and the Leaving Mouth Church's Facebook page and our YouTube uh, page as well, our YouTube channel. So please uh, visit those and have a look and see what's going on in, in the church and in the wider church as well. Because not only will you find it, 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 information about what we're doing, but also about what the national church is doing and uh, what local churches are doing. I've also been asked to indicate that there are extra copies of Life and Work available at the front door. So if you'd like to just have a, a look at it, uh, they're available there. Just take one away uh, uh, free of charge. <laughs> you can't say you don't get anything for free when you come to church. So there you are, <laughs> copy of Life and Work. There's some good articles in there, actually, so I would recommend that you, you have a look at it if you're not familiar with it. But this morning we come together to worship God. We come to sing our praise, to bring our concerns, to bring our anxieties, to bring our worries, and just lay them at his feet. We come because we want this, our church, to grow, we want to be able to share our faith with other people. We want to bring other people into our family so that they too may experience the love, the grace, the peace, and the forgiveness of God. That same experience, those same blessings that we build our lives upon. Let's then begin by singing that hymn, 352, the hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, 352.
And now we simply unite as one family and come before God in prayer. Let us pray. O most holy God, we take this moment just to pause and to wonder, to bless you and thank you for your greatness, which is balanced by your nearness, your judgment, which is balanced by your mercy. And as we still ourselves before you and we wait, yet we also lift up our eyes to see you face to face. And we call upon you, our King, our Saviour, our inspiration, our friend. Knowing that too often we rush by and fail to take that time to marvel and exclaim at the wonder of this world, the intricacy of creation, the abundance of good things you have given us to enjoy and to share. But, oh, forgiving God, we know that it does not take us long to stumble, stumble from the high peak of praise to the low valley of brokenness as the awareness of our sin engulfs us like a darkening cloud. As we reflect upon not only the major flaws in our characters, but the petty triviality that trips us up daily. Forgive us then the hasty word, the harsh thought, the too easy judgment, the spiteful action. For Father, we ask ourselves often, why? Why with all the potential you have knitted into our souls? Do we so easily slip into the bad habit, the shameful action, unhealthy obsession, lazy forgetfulness? O oh, gracious God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, remake us, redeem us, restore us. And when all seems lost beyond hope, reach out to us in tenderness and kindness and make that difference in our hearts, our souls and our minds to reinstate the broken relationships, to give us the second chance that we solely need. For Father, we just ask this through that same Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who taught us when we come together as one family, to say together the words of that family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We take our reading this morning from the, New, from the New Testament, the book of James, James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. And you'll find that on page 226 in the New Testament of the Pew Bible. And I'll ask Susan to read that for us today. James 1, verses 19 to 27. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. 
but ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Just realise I'm reading the whole chapter. We'll go on to verse 19. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers, hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you, Susan. We sing together now hymn number 192, All My Hope on God is Founded, and we'll miss out verse 4. 192, missing out verse 4. One of the things that uh, you notice very quickly on this job, and certainly it's been true for myself over a long number of years, that when you start talking to people about the church and about God, they say the strangest things to you sometimes. And you look at them and you just wonder, where on earth did that come from? And what idiot told them that? Unfortunately, the idiot was usually me, but never mind, that's another story. <laughs> One phrase that keeps on repeating itself time and time again 
is that phrase, well, of course, I'm not religious. I'm not religious. Now, I have to confess, I'm never really very sure what they mean by that. What do you mean by not religious? Because very often when I press them, they will say, well, yeah, I believe in God and something out there, but I don't know. Now, of course, I know what they're really trying to do is simply justify their inactivity, their lack of response to the love that God has for them. And people will use many, many excuses to do that. But I think what we in the church have to realise is behind that need to justify themselves lies a basic lack of understanding of what true religion really is. Lack of understanding of what the, the church is really all about. They don't understand it, so they say, okay, I believe in God up to a point, but I'm not religious. Now, I should say here that, quite frankly, I'm not really sure that I would want any member of the church to go around describing themselves as religious. Because, really, it sounds to me just a bit pious and a bit self-righteous. But it also seems to me that, clearly, we do need some sort of understanding ourselves of what true religion is, if we are ever going to encourage those people to think again about their belief in God. And James, in our reading, points us in the direction of the path that leads us to true religion. And he begins by talking about the Christian character. That's where he starts. We must be slow to speak and slow to anger. We must be ready to listen. And there are two reasons for that, he says. First of all, if we are not listening, we cannot hear God. And so, fulfill God's purpose for us here on this earth. And secondly, if we're not listening to each other, we cannot care for each other. Because one of the things that we, we try to do as Christians and as a church is to care for each other. But the very first act of caring is listening. When we listen to each other, we demonstrate that the other person is important to us. But what is also important is in that act of listening, we try to listen for the areas of concern that lie underneath the outward words of reassurance. It's all too easy. We've all done it, still do it, to accept the other person's I'm fine, thank you, at face value. With a little time listening, we'll reveal that actually everything is far from fine. But you know, we don't listen also li listen with just our just our ears. We also listen with our eyes. Because if you look into someone's eyes, you can see the worry behind the smile. And if we pay attention to the other person's body language, you can soon tell if they're relaxed and happy and, and comfortable. When we listen with our ears and our eyes, then we'll know when help is needed. Now that's not easy. But there will be times when you miss the other person's signal for help. There will be times when you read the signals wrongly, when our outstretched hand is rejected because it's not wanted or needed. But that's the risk we take. That is the position that Christian love automatically puts us into. Some time ago, a number of years now, I was talking to a lady who hadn't been to church for some time. And she was telling me that she thought the Christian faith was all about caring. Well, I agreed. And then I asked her about a mutual friend who I knew had been ill and still was ill. I don't know, she said. 
I'm not the sort of person who goes knocking on people's doors in case they think I'm interfering or being nosy. What that lady had forgotten was that Christian love puts us automatically in that position of risk. We knock on the door to show that we care and to listen. And then James goes on. He goes on to tell us how we are to achieve that state of listening. We are to submit to God, he says, and accept his word and get rid of all wicked conduct. In other words, we are to receive God's word both inwardly and outwardly. He's simply making the point that God speaks to us in two ways. Yes, we hear his word read from the Bible. But God has also planted his seed inside us before we were born. So remember what he's saying is that God speaks to you from the very depths of your own being. And very often, you know, when we look for answers from God, what do we do? We tend to look outside of ourselves. When in reality, the answer often lies inside ourselves. From within and from outside of ourselves, God is directing us in his way. But then he makes the very obvious point, doesn't he? That there is no point at all in hearing the word and then, and then not doing anything about it. Listening, hearing, and doing go together. We are to look closely into the perfect law, James says. In other words, we are to look closely into Christ and follow his example. And when we manage that, then we are set free. Set free from our own human desires. In other words, we're set free from the corruptive influence of this world. True religion then, James is saying, starts from the position of listening. Listening to God, listening to each other. From then, it leads to the position of doing something. True religion is not a passive thing. It's an active thing. Because as he quite rightly says, listening to God without acting is as bad, in fact, not worse, than acting without listening. But in amongst all of that, something else comes out. True religion is all about people. People and their relationships. It's about our relationship to God and our relationship with each other. Everything else that we call religious is simply a means to an end. Our church buildings, it's only bricks and mortar. Our organizations, our rituals, the way, the things that we do are all simply a means to an end. Those things are not God's main priority. They are not his main concern. He is not in the least interested in whether we sing from this hymn book or that hymn book, or whether we have flowers on the communion table or we don't have flowers on the communion table. He couldn't care less. What he's interested in is his, your relationship with him and your relationship with each other. So James is simply telling us today to listen more, to listen to others, to listen to God, to keep ourselves from being corrupted 
by the world. He's telling us to look into Christ, to follow Christ's example, and so develop our relationship with him and with each other. And by doing that, by doing that, then, then we will all be on the path that leads to true religion. Amen. We sing together now hymn number 562, Through the Love of God our Saviour. 562. And now we simply unite in prayer. O oh, gracious Lord, when we review the ways in which you continue to break in upon our lives, showering us with gifts and wonder, we are reminded how we, in our living, should emulate that same generosity. Remind us that the best giving is cheerful, that the unclenched hand is more fitted to sharing, Accept then what we offer today, our time, our talents, and our money, and all that we have and are, so that this world, our world, your world, need not be gripped by fear or want, or lack of shelter, or lack of friends. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. And now we simply unite as one family and come before God with our prayers for others. Let us pray. O eternal God, we may only see our small corner of this earth, but we know that you will see the whole expanse of countless universes. And yet we are called to bring our prayers, not only for ourselves, but for those around us. Father, in a world fraught with fear and violence and greed, we pray that darkness is driven out by the light of compassion, of open-handedness, and of peace. Let, not, let these not be mere words, we pray, but words we put into action through our support of causes and charities 
and individuals who make it their mission to be the light bearers in every darksome place. We pray today for the healers who practice their gentleness in every hurt place of heart and soul and body, where the encouraging word and the unflinching compassion brings hope like a cleansing flame into every wound. We pray today for the teachers whose gift of thinking and words enrich our mind and help us to grow and develop and mature. Especially today we thank you for those who taught us to pray, who formed the ideas and the rhythms that to this day give texture, colour and shape to the, to the relationship we have with you, our living God. And, O oh Father, we pray for all who are called to be the decision-makers in our society at every level. For artists and scientists, for politicians, for farmers and business owners, for those who provide our energy and secure our safety. We pray for our world, its beauty and fragility, the astonishing resources and the unsustainable demands we make on them. And as we seek to form a new relationship with you, our God, and with our brothers and sisters, let us also seek to form a new relationship with this earth we call our home. Nurturing it, tending it, stewarding its beauty and energy, not only for ourselves, but for the generations still to come. O oh, holy God, so much to pray for that one prayer is never enough. So may our pledge today be to offer new prayers each morning, each night, as we revel in your presence. Humble ourselves in your mercy. Strengthen ourselves in your love. This we ask through that same Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We sing together now hymn number 738, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. And of course, after the benediction, we will sing together the Lomond benediction, which you'll find on the back of your order of service. 738, 738 Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. 